So lads, we are finally back with another video. Now we're doing another keyboard one, but uh, this time we're not going to be building a keyboard. It's more towards, you know, spicing up your keyboard life, making it look that much better, making it feel that much better. So stick around for the whole thing, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun. So, ladies and gentlemen, this right here is our end result. Now, if you don't like it, then that's okay, you can click off this video, but for those of you, you know, you love that little bit of RGB, you love the custom art keycaps, you, you like the sound, I don't know if you've heard it already or not, then stick around. Up on screen are going to be all the timestamps, so you can check out wherever you want to go in the video, if you want to check out keycaps, you want to check out lubing your switches, you want to check out putting foam in the back of your keyboard, whatever you want to check out, go and check out the timestamps and you can skip to that place. But for the sake of making this video so much easier for me, we're going to start from the top down, and so we're going to start with the keycaps that we got. If you are a beginner, I know that a lot of you come in with the mentality that keycaps don't really matter too badly. You can just get a set, it doesn't affect the sound or your typing experience, anything like that, but it does. Trust me. I know. I've done this before. Anyway, point is, uh, we have a pretty nice but cheaper end set. These are some art keycaps that I got off AliExpress, I'm sure you've seen a few photos up on screen. Anyway, these are pretty solid, I believe I got them for around $25, and they have a nice thick inside and everything. You can use these keycaps in just about any size keyboard, full size, 60%, 65, 10 keyless, whatever you want, these will most likely fit in it. Now, if you don't like these art keycaps, that's fine, you can go and search your own, whatever you want. But my one recommendation is that you get white keycaps. Now, white keycaps, the reason why I say that is because if you have RGB, it's going to make it look so much nicer and so much cleaner. Now, I don't know if you've seen from the shots that I've shown you, but the RGB on my keyboard transitions really well between each key. And that's because I have white keycaps. I used to have black keycaps before and it did not look that good. White keycaps help a lot with the RGB. If you're not into that RGB scene or you don't want white keycaps, that's fine. That's up to you. But that's my recommendation for you. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, all links are in the description so you can go and check those out. Now, I don't care if you've got Holy Panthers, if you've got black inks, you've got Gatoron blue switches, whatever switch you have, you have to lube them. That, it's not a choice. It is always going to sound better if you lube your switches. Now, different switches require different amounts of lube. Like, if you're going to lube your clicky switches, you know you want them to sound a lot less clicky, or you just want them to have a little extra thock in there instead of being so high pitch and loud, then you're going to need to apply a lot more lube than you would to, say, a little bit on, like, a black ink or a holy panda. But, lube always helps, no matter what. No lubes are really expensive. You can get them all for under $20, no matter what lube it is, even if you're going for Crytox 205 Grade Zero. But, for the sake of this video being very budget, we have this stuff. This is uh, from China, and uh, it costs us $1.95. We're going to see what it can do for us. So here's a little sound test before and after what blue Gatoron switches sound like. I don't know, maybe some of you have an unlubed Gatoron Blue fetish. But I certainly don't, and I definitely like these ones a lot more than the unlubed ones. Anyway, on to the next part of our keyboard. So basically, the next step is very simple, doesn't change any looks or anything, but it makes a good sound effect onto your keyboard. We're just putting some foam underneath the PCB of the keyboard. Now, if you don't feel comfortable taking apart your whole keyboard, all that sort of thing, that's fine. You don't have to do this step. It's not majorly important, but it does add a nice touch, a bit more of a fulfilling sound when you're using your keyboard. So what you're mainly going to find when you open up your keyboard is this. Nothing. You're going to find nothing. There's not going to be anything under there except the case. So what we're doing is we're getting some thinner sheets of foam and just sticking it under the PCB and then screwing it back down. Not hard, but I'll show you how to do it. So here are the steps for putting foam in the back of your keyboard. Pretty simple. All you have to do is take off screws off of your PCB, so you know it's not screwed in. 
then you pull up from the bottom of your PCB to take it out and then somehow grab off the top as well because you don't want to be breaking your USB Type-C port or whatever you have on your keyboard. It differs from keyboard to keyboard. I have a GK61, it's going to change for yours if you don't. Next, you want to get your pre-cut foam that is cut to scale for the inside of your case and then what you can do is as you shove it down, the holes for the screws should sort of just poke through the foam depending on how thick it is. If you have a thicker piece of foam, maybe you want to pre-cut those out so that it can get through. So you put that down, then you put the PCB back on and then you screw it back in. I feel like I didn't need to do a part... Wait, am I even recording? Yeah, okay, I am recording. Sorry, my bad. I feel like I didn't need to do a part for uh, the keycaps because that is pretty simple. You literally just pull it off. But yeah, anyway. Anyway, other than those tips, there's not much more that I can give you guys. Now, if you do want to hear a sound comparison, here is before versus after. I know, it is a pretty big difference, but I think it's completely worth all the time and effort it takes. So I recommend that you maybe get into the scene of custom keyboards if you haven't already. And if you have, well then I hope this helped you out anyway. If you do want to find any of the parts, then link will be down in the description, you can go and check them out. Uh, we do have pretty solid prices on all of them, I believe everything all up comes to like under $30. So to change your keyboard that much, I think it's a great deal. Now apart from that, I would personally just like to apologize for the delay in videos. It's almost been three weeks since I posted and honestly that's on me guys. I should have been more up to date. Unfortunately, I did have a lot of assignments stuck due at the end of school year and everything, so I was a bit busy. But anyway, it'd just be appreciated if you could be a bit understanding. And also, just so you know, we always make content like this. Uh, we make other content as well, like building PCs, that sort of thing. So if you did enjoy or you found it helpful or anything like that, I would appreciate it so much if you subscribed down below. That'd be awesome. Other than that, you're free to go now, guys. You can go and skip on to the next video, whatever you want. I'll see you soon. See ya.